Okay, my bike is blown up. Don't exactly know what's going on. This is the gas station, by the way. Please like and subscribe. But we're tearing the motherfucker down again. Maybe we're just gonna put more horsepower in this motherfucker. I don't know what to do. I got the 107 Mac in there. Love it. I changed the timing. And that's the only thing that I've done since it blew up. But I think it's gonna be in my... Something happened. All I did really on the mapping was change the timing a little bit. But something happened with the rings or something. It sounds really bad. I don't even want to start it. I don't want to make anything worse than it has to be. I put it at home. It was just it pretty much loss of power. Seems like one side's working, the other side's not. And I tried to punch it a couple times. And I'm like, uh, no, that's not happening. So what we have here is a big loss of power and motor getting hot. It almost seems like the front piston is the culprit, but um, I don't think I did it with the timing or anything like that. I didn't um, reach hard or, I mean, I've been pinning this motherfucker. I've been racing this bitch. I mean, and I just did its first oil change. So right now I just spent all the money, just did the first oil change, took it out first time, blew it up. Um, the oil light came on on the bike. Right then I knew something was more than wrong. At first I said, maybe it's the fuel because it was really low on fuel. I, needed, I was running on fumes. <sighs> but after everything said and done, I know what it is kind of. It's probably gonna be up in the rocker box or the head itself um, but I can hear the ring so I don't know man I measured those rings really well and really good and um, we'll see what's going on in there stay tuned for everything that we're going to be doing but as of right now we're going to start popping off this, this, the seat, so all the big parts coming off, um, yeah, nobody likes to put a bent thunder header back on the bike, we're gonna take that off, um, it's all coming off again, guys, <laughs> stay tuned, let's, uh, give me an hour or two, and, uh, we'll be back, and we'll see what the fuck's going on, it's gonna be up here in the front. Really don't want to start it from you guys, but we got to do it for the channel. It's already fucked up. It ain't going to be any more fucked up. So, neutral. Got it in. Here we go. Low range. It's even throwing you know, different shit that I never see on there. So... <laughs> I just changed the lifters. I know it's not the lifters. If it is the lifters, they sound come really bad. But these are Screaming Eagle lifters, guys. So here we go. Let's start taking this shit apart. It's only running on one cylinder. It's all bad. With that said, I appreciate you guys being here. And stay tuned. I just got this thing fucking... The windows fixed last night after they busted it in. And impounded my Porsche Boxster hard top um, I just got it smogged today I just spent a thousand dollars on this vehicle getting it registered getting it smogged getting it out of impound which was four hundred and seventy five dollars and now those fucking assholes man let's start uh, we gotta have a different perspective that's now done this is now the work and I have a wood table over there that I haven't quite got to work on yet. But anyways, stay tuned for you, for this guy. Let's take all this shit apart and see what's going on. With that said, I'll see you guys on the next one. Please like and subscribe. What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of the gas station. Alright, I have a confession to make. I probably I did over tighten my cam plate. I did not align up my oil pump properly and now I'm left with this. It was 
literally cracked in every single spot. Like it grenaded everything. This was part two. But you can see it was aligned up wrong. And in my old video, I show everybody that the person that worked on my bike actually put this in the very back. And then I said that they did it wrong. But then I go and I do it wrong also. But you can see there's, I mean, there's some scarring, there's a little wear, there's, but it's not, it's really not, it's not really like where it stops my finger now. So we're going to clean this up with some thousand grit sandpaper or something, something to make it real nice, uh, flat again, and um, you can see it was probably over tightened on this side, then it went into a little bind. That's all it took for it to then uh, not be able to pump properly and then kink it and then break it. And so I thought it was my front cylinder, so we got everything back apart again. You, we were just here doing this. I just did my first oil change, so I thought maybe it was a cavitation problem because my kid was asleep. I didn't have time to start the vehicle, stop it. I did originally to check the oil, so, but then after that I didn't let it warm up properly and there may have been like an airlock I was thinking inside the pump, which then it wasn't getting oil properly and then blew up. But after talking to a pretty, some pretty good mechanics and Harley Davidson mechanics and whatnot, uh, shout out to Miller Speed Co. Um, but uh, they pretty much told me over there that Bryce, nice kid, he pretty much told me that uh, when he does bolt these up, he rolls the back tire and when he bolts the spec, uh, the plate itself on there, he's, he's rolling the tire around and then he gets, you know, whatever the torque spec is first, you know, quarter of it, half of it, and then you go all the way up with every single bolt but you're spinning the tire during every single step of the torque wrench. So you're making sure everything is clean and clear and it's uh, aligned properly. I didn't do that. I probably just used the back tire and put it in there and bolted the son of a bitch in. But uh, this time we're gonna do it properly and um, yeah, stay tuned guys. Another episode of the gas station, here it is. All right, this is what we got going on, guys. Give you a little update here. So, um, as far as putting the oil pump on and it, my flywheel getting chewed up, it's a brand new SNS flywheel Timken bearing kit. Um, so it was very upsetting to see the oil pump blown up, but you know I'm gonna take that responsibility on myself as that being my fault. Um, so we're back in here right now, and I'm just showing you guys that I'm cleaning up the shaft. Um, I just, I'm using the old, uh, I don't know what it's called, one of the um, inner parts uh, for the oil pump. The other ones are broken, but there's two different names of, the, of these, I'm, I'm blanking right now, but, so I'm using one of them, and I'm just pushing it on the shaft and making sure it's the right size. Um, so what we have here is I clean it up with a little dremel piece, um, try to use a little file, uh, some 240 sandpaper, some 320 sandpaper, some 400 sandpaper. Um, then I'll clean it up with a thousand at the very end. But with the Dremel piece did the best and it was the fastest of getting it but you don't want to take too much off I covered this up with tape because it started to rub against it this is very important not to mess up this is also very important not to mess up so it wouldn't go on halfway before right now it slides all the way on and I have not done the bottom yet so I don't want to take too much off the top 
So we'll go down to the bottom and then we'll continue that side. Make sure this goes on nice and smooth. Not too smooth to where it's chattery. Um, this is a very, very delicate. I mean, I shouldn't be using this piece right here, but I am. And it works because there's like chunks of metal that's on there. So I, I'm not hitting the whole thing. I'm just kind of hitting those pieces of metal that are standing up. Anyways, it does slide on. I don't want to take too much off. I still got the other side to do that's quite a bit more um, chingered up still, even though I've already worked on that. Uh, like I said, very important to put the tape on. And with that said, that's the update for now. Uh, we'll clean it all up, put new O-rings in, and um, as soon as this oil pump goes on, uh, this piece right here to give me the clearance then you'll be back watching this and we'll enter it right on on guys here's another update for you so we're still working on the mic like always and this is what we got here I took the pin out this way took the clip out I uh, took the pin out grabbed the piston went and cleaned up the piston um, then I slid it upside down and then um, I got it in there, I got the clip in, I got the pin in, everything's good to go, brand new gasket. So we're going to set this in there and then I will be able to do more of what I need to do down here. But uh, I think tomorrow I'm going to go get a new gasket up here. It's a specific gasket. It's that kind of gasket up there, Calm, C-O-M-E, T-I-C, gasket, and it's a certain space that I have to have, so um, I'm going to go get a new one of those in the morning, and I'm going to start putting my oil pump and stuff together after this, so when you do this, make sure you have racks in here, if you don't want to drop anything down in there, um, other than that, stay tuned for the next time. I'm recording, which will probably be the uh, oil pump, putting that together. Um, as far as the shaft here, I got it all cleaned up. So what I did here guys is the little parts that I had right here that were kind of messed up. I just took the sanding block right here and just blocked it with some 400, cleaned it up. Um, you can kind of see there's still little lines in it, but it's pretty good. It's pretty smooth. Um, yeah, it took some off right here, but um, it's not that big of a deal. It's still gonna be straight as soon as it bolts up. Um, but I did block it just a little bit. I tried to stay right here with most of the pressure, but the floppy ends of it did touch over here. So I'm happy with it. Um, I'll be assembling it uh, maybe in the morning. Still cleaning up everything, all the oil ports and everything else. So uh, stay tuned for a, a clean, a bunch of clean products to go together. But I think that's gonna be good right now. Um, hopefully, if not, we'll be getting a different cam plate. So this is what I did last time that was wrong. I bolted the pump up to the plate and I was having a rough time getting it in there. After going and watching the video, I finally noticed um, my old video. What I'm gonna do now is what the manual says, what I didn't do before. You put this in first, 
and then you put the plate on and the torque for this is going to be 45 the first torque and the numbers are right um, on the plate one two three four so you go diagonal like one two three four whatever it says on there and then it's like 45 inch pounds the first one torque and then the second final one would be um, anywhere from 90 to 120 so that's what I did wrong by not aligning this up right I will be putting this in first like the manual says I'll be re-rolling the back tire and making sure everything's aligned up correctly and I'll be putting assembly lube um, on here so stay tuned for that don't mess this up so that was super easy I just concentrated on where this was positioned at um, it's not straight up and down where the flats at I had to roll it the flats over here the dot is in the middle of the flat as you can see it's at about the 11 o'clock position I rolled the back tire around, got it in there, popped it in the hole there. And the next thing we do when we do bolt this up, we're gonna I'm gonna go read the manual, but pretty much we're gonna roll the back tire and make sure as we're bolting it up that it's free. And instead of doing two torque specs, I'll probably do like four or five of them to get it to 120 inch pounds. Just make sure everything is supposed to be where it is supposed to be and it's aligned correctly. So that's how it's supposed to look right now. Not bolted up onto the plate as I did before in my other video. So I'm sorry for that. I'll have to go back and uh, edit that video. But um, there's still good knowledge over there. But this is a way to do it. Read the manual. I do put the manual in the description. So go check it out. Download it for yourself. And if you can't download it, reach out to me and I'll get it for you. So this is what I got. It's all in there like I just showed you guys. I'm going to be using some assembly lube. Not very much. I'm just going to put on my fingers. And I'm just going to kindly wipe just a little bit on that. So it's not going to clog any ports up. Some Molly assembly lube. It should uh, be good. Very little. You can barely even see it. Not much at all. Like I said, I don't want to clog no ports up. This time we're doing it right. I'm also going to put some assembly lube. Here at the top, that was a lot right there. What I'm gonna do, get it, roll it around here, get it here, roll it around right here. No globs, but I want it to be right. I think these are S and S or Timkin, one or the other. Says on them. Um, I think that's enough. Okay. Actually, I think they're Timken. I bought all Timken bearings for this thing. But, uh, yeah. So that's what we got going. A little bit of lube assembly. Uh, let's go right in here. You could almost put lube assembly here on the back. I just don't want too much on there. Just to help it keep it on there. If, you, if your bike's not straight. But, um, mine's straight. And then everything, the oil pumps looks like it's staying on. So we're going to bolt it up to 20 inch pounds. Or I'm going to go 10 inch pounds. Then I'm going to go 20 inch pounds. Then I'm going to go 30 inch pounds. I'm going to go 10 all the way up until I hit 100. And I'm going to roll the back tire every single time. Make sure everything stays aligned. And that should do it. And the other video, it showed me pounding on the fucking cam plate. Um, all wrong. So, this is uh, the way you're supposed to do what the manual says. 
I don't know why I didn't look in the manual. It was hard for me to find it now, maybe. It was hard for me to find it before. But it's in the manual. So, with that said, that's going to be it for tonight. Tomorrow, we'll uh, put the rest of this motherfucker together. So, anyways, gas station's out. Alright, update for you guys. Here's another update for you guys. I got everything cleaned up. I went to go put my cam plate in. Uh, bolt everything up. Uh, you start. You got to get the manual, read the manual, but pretty much the sequence in tightening up the cam plate before you tighten up the oil pump. Well, I did it wrong originally. I've always not used the torque wrench, um, and that was my mess up. So anyways, what I did is I over tightened it. I stripped it out the last time I did it. And the first bolt that you tighten up is the one with the two O-rings on it, which is this one right here. This is the first one that you tighten up right here. So when you put it in, when you tighten it up, um, that's the first one that you have there. I think that's for a different gear. Um, so what I did is I put the bolt in here, I went to tighten it up, it's like one, two, three, four, and then you do the oil pump and blah, 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 blah. But I stripped it originally, so I never, I don't want to just put the plate on and this one not be in there because there's not another one that supports the plate on the bottom. It would just be a few um, of the other ones. Uh, it's like one, two, three, four, five. This being the sixth one and not happening. So what I did is I drilled it. Um, what is it? Uh, 1364 for a quarter inch, um, 20 NC. So I drilled it. But this is just like a little piece that's in here. So when I drilled, it went through the back. And so when I blow through them, I'm trying to find a diagram as far as the oil ports, but when I blow through them, each one, this one, they don't interconnect with each other, which is good. I was just hoping that I didn't fuck something up. But you can see here, it goes all the way back. Well, that's exactly what it does. As soon as you drill through this, um, it goes all the way back so when I spray the cleaner is coming off the back side in here so I know it's going through but now I have all those shavings inside of there I got most of them out but there's, there's still a little bit of shavings I would imagine in there so we'll be dumping the oil but when I do fill it up with oil I don't think I'm gonna use the oil that I I would rather use a cheaper oil but who knows I might just fill it up run it for like till it gets warm top end and then drain the oil again and then I'll start with some fresh oil and then change that oil after about 500 miles but uh, what we have going on right here is the cuttings going through I'm gonna have to drop the oil anyways but now I'm gonna have to be watching um, for just wear and tear with uh, cuttings but there wasn't that many cuttings and I blew it out with uh, you know before you go too far you blow it out with the cleaner brake cleaner and then um, after the brake cleaner uh, using the cutting oil so I can go in with this and it feels like it'll work this is a much longer bolt two different sizes so I'll be using the longer one here. It goes in fine. The, about right there is where it starts the new threads. And it's like, I could be okay with that, but it still feels really loose. So what I'm gonna go do is I'm gonna go get a piece of all thread. I'm gonna run it in here. I'm gonna get it to where it's sized out perfectly for a nut to go on the cam plate. I'm gonna epoxy it in there. 
with some really good epoxy and after that it'll just be like this and you'll be using a bolt this one's too wide to go inside the cam plate but this piece will never come out again this one will will then just have a bolt on the outside and realistically I should do that to all of them but uh, I may or may not do that so stay tuned for that that's how I fix my fuck up that I did or my mess up that I did excuse my language but anyways we got more than enough time it's COVID ain't nobody going to work ain't nobody give shit so I got a lot of time to fuck with this I got my friends talking shit you build your bike more than you ride it and these motherfuckers don't even ride uh so here we go that's the update for now and um stay tuned too bad this piece I mean I don't want to mess it up more but you could just drill this piece out helicoil another one in there and call it a day I don't want to deal with that shit no more so I'm gonna try to put this in there epoxy it and hopefully it gives me some peace of mind and hopefully I can get the right torque out of it and I probably will let it dry until tomorrow uh, other than that uh, the best epoxy that you can get is from like a boat place two-in-one epoxy I'm not gonna go spend all that money unless they have something cheaper but I'm just gonna run the loads and see what kind of epoxy they have I'm not gonna be using any Harbor Freight epoxy um, we got to get something good for heat something that's gonna work so stay tuned for that I may use some Bondo but I always have problems with Bondo like it never bonds right but maybe I'm just using the Harbor Freight one and it sucks anyway stay tuned all right guys quick update here okay so I went to the store I got the all thread I double bolted it I tried to put it in the nut was too wide to get in there then I was thinking maybe I could put a washer but when I put the tensioner guide on um, the bracket literally goes like all the way over there so it would have had to been like the nut touches it so there was no way of doing it I took this and it had the, the epoxy already on there I used some Bondo so I did Bondo this one it did torque the spec right now so it didn't need the Bondo but I don't want to have a problem with it later on I'm hoping that this all stays together I torqued everything down to spec the way that the manual says you know one two three four and then same thing here and I rolled the back tire um, the whole time I gotta hold my piss I gotta hold my jugs down when I do do that but anyways I did all that um, everything should be running clear and I only torqued it down to 100 um, inch pounds so I think you could go 90 to 120 maybe but the Bondo's in there it's the reason why I do have that in there is because I drilled through it and I don't want oil pressure to be coming back this way loosen up the bolt or whatever there's blue Loctite on everything else as you can see I got dripped in blue Loctite Harbor Freight status, not the best one, but anyways, so Blue Lock tightened everything, everything's torqued down to 100 inch pounds, and I did it in sequence, the correct way of torquing it down, and I ran my piston up and down so that it will align properly. Anyways guys, I did oil inside of my um, oil pump, I put um, some shock oil that I have then a, a little bottle I pour it on a lot of stuff and then on the gears and stuff and the bearings and um, even the lobes a little bit I put a little bit of that molly assembly grease and I think that's gonna be it I know I'm gonna have a problem getting it off later on hopefully we don't have to do that for quite some time but um, with that said it is a new bolt so hopefully it'll come off when I need it to but this did not work wish it did and I think maybe on the old style it does um, if you have like a gear maybe but 
I couldn't do it. I thought I was going to be able to. I could have probably found a smaller nut, but I just told myself, take it out, take it out now before it dries up. Even though it takes four hours for it to dry up, um, it's already starting to set up. So I added a little bit onto this bolt. Like I said, it torqued the spec. Um, that's already after I've drilled and tapped it. Mm. Anyways, with that said, that's going to be it for me today. Monday is Monday, and I'll go and get this um, gasket, and uh, we'll get this thing all back together and run in tomorrow. Wish me luck. If you have problems like this, what did you do to yours? Uh, we're not changing the whole case. Also, I could have just drilled out. Next time, I'll probably just drill the tappet or the... the um, uh, the whatever that fucking little metal piece is called I can't remember right now but I could have just tapped into that and had a, a bigger bolt to go through and just opened up the plate if I needed to uh, but I'll probably try that next time um, without drilling a hole in my plate and if it makes me want to drill a hole in my plate I'll just go with the heli, uh, heli plug heli plug or heli coil that's what it is I'll just go with one of those um, it does look like there's enough meat but I don't want to mess anything up too much it's good it's torque to spec and it's on correctly the way that the manual says so with that one said that's gonna be it for today I'll see you guys on the next one well the next one will be right here cheers happy holidays A couple days it's gonna be Christmas all right well let me give you guys a little update here I got my gaskets all cleaned up, uh, top and bottom of the head, uh, it's all polished, not really polished, but it's all cleaned up, took a little piece of sandpaper, just got the big pieces off, other than that you can see it's pretty shiny, pretty cleaned up, uh, the bottom of the head as well, I have my Comatech, Comtech, whatever the fuck it's called, gasket, Give me a new sticker actually. So I got a white one and a black one. Anyways, with that said, so in the book it says something like, <clears throat> I'll tell you what the book says. I think it's 120 inch pounds all the way around, and then it goes, uh, 15 to 17 foot pounds and then it's 90 degrees from there. Oh, you can't see it. Only I can. But this one actually gives you uh, directions. So in sinkins we'll tie in all head bolts to 9 foot pounds. Then in sequence tighten all head bolts to 14 pounds. Again in sequence tighten all bolts to 22 foot pounds. Then in sequence, tighten all bolt, head bolts to 35 foot pounds. And finally, torque all head bolts to a final torque of 42 foot pounds in sequence. So, in sequence, let's see. You can see right here in sequence. One, two, three, four. So, we're gonna follow directions. We will continue. I got all the oils drained out of my bike. I got brand new gaskets. Well, I only needed one, so it comes in two. So uh, we'll get this together. And shout out to Comtech. And we will put these in right now. And again, make sure that you have new head bolts or they're very clean and new because I'm not getting new ones this time hopefully it doesn't mess me over I have a uh, not stock stuff in here they're like ARP or some shit so other than that uh, we'll get after it right now and that's the update everything's cleaned up there was towels and everything to make sure that um, there's no debris and stuff in there but I'm pretty get. I'm getting close, so I removed all that stuff, and um, we're gonna hit it. Uh, before you do cap everything off, hit it with a little bit of air, just so you know what's going on. 
but or just so you know that it's all cleaned out and whatnot but um I uh, can't wait to put this video up like I said before sorry about that last uh, cam video this video will be an update to that cam plate and um, before I had knocked this with the hammer a bunch of times not hard but you know I was doing it wrong oil pump goes in first like I told you guys before and then it's like one two three four five six torque and sequence oil pump also you just have to read the manual other than that I hope you guys appreciate everything I hope you guys are having a good holiday and me I have this fucking thing running either tonight or tomorrow I got it I two two weeks ago I just did that oil change and I just bought a brand new gasket for the primary side I'll need to go buy another gasket for the primary side reason why I got uh, all the holes closed is because I was letting it breathe. I had, uh, when I did clean that bolt hole up, I got a bunch of that uh, brake cleaner in there. So, I'm um, trying to let that evaporate. I talked to a guy at the shop today. He said, most likely that will boil off. Um, but just try to get as much as you can out. So... Well, I don't think you guys can see it, but what it says is uh, make sure you get the gasket after you tighten up the head bolts and the correct breathing pattern. That's pretty self-explanatory. There'll be a gap over here. If not, go and check out the page. Um, let's see. It's like 281, 282 uh, down in the description. You guys can download the manual for free. So you guys can read the same thing. We're gonna put the gasket on right now. And then after we put the gasket on, we're gonna then tighten in sequence, glue thread, rock, thread lock on all six bolts. We're gonna run those down. And uh, it's a 120 to 168 inch pounds. Inch pounds, not foot pounds. So, and then um, uh, final tight the rear left rocker housing bolt. Using a torque wrench with a quarter inch drive. Little film of oil. Anyways, you guys could go read this. Um, right now we're going to get the inch torque wrench out. We're going to set it up to uh, 50. And then we're going to go to maybe 50, 60. Then we're going to go to 120. And then I'll probably um, stop it at uh, 168. I like to put kind of max torque on it because it's been on and off a few times so that's what we're gonna do if you're doing a new assembly tighten it up to about 135 inch pounds those are going to be the six bolts and that's going to be the sequence it's like one two three four five six and then kind of opposite kind of the same for the other one the other head so the, but right now we're working on the front one which is this one and that's what we're going to be doing like I said before that's 282 281 page download it in the description you guys can check it out for yourself with that said we're gonna put the um, gasket rocker box everything together right now real quick guys on those uh, bolts that go to the rocker box connected to the head uh, we're gonna clean them up uh, if you put uh, blue Loctite or red Loctite on them. You want to make sure that they are cleaned up. I'm going to put some brake cleaner on them because Loctite doesn't work correctly. I've been working in threads in the oil field for fucking 16 years threading up pipe and working with people that specialize in this. It doesn't work correctly if it if you have anesthes on it it either has to be before or after. But the part that connects with the metal to metal, it has to be a clean thread. So, we're going to clean these off. And then, uh, glue Loctite, we're going to stick them in. So, the next thing that it shows us after tightening up those six bolts is, off the rocker housing, is, uh, 
not the breather, not anything else. It just shows the O-ring um, aligning everything, but then it shows the tappet cover. So we're gonna put the push rod lifters and covers in, and that's what we're showing right here. And that's on page 283. Uh, and the cover screws are gonna be 90 to 120 inch inch pounds. 90 to 120 inch pounds. We're gonna put those four in with the tappets. We're gonna throw some uh, assembly lube in there, and we're gonna get them in. Continue to read when you go through this, but this is what I'm showing you right now. Okay, after we put those six bolts in, now we're going to the lifters. Then after that, we'll put the breather, the rocker, the rocker arms in, and um, we'll just continue to how the manual says, the correct way. So follow along. Click up then you guys. This bolt back here, rocker bolt, this be number one, two, three, four, I believe, 22 foot pounds. So I put 15, one, two, three, four, and then after that, 22, boom, 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 boom. Then I rolled around again, make sure it's all good. Breather, I'll put it at 150 inch pounds. And then that will be that for this. Stay updated. All right, guys, quick update here. These sprockets right here, the bigger bolt, got it all lined up, the little dots right here. Check out in the manual, read the manual, it's in the description, way down there, go check it out, download it. If it's not a downloadable link, um, shoot me an email or something, my email will be down in the description and I will send it to you. Anyways, read the manual, it says 15 foot pounds for both, back it off. Um, 90 degrees or whatever and then that's probably just to get it straight but then after that um, 34 foot pounds 24 foot pounds that's what we're gonna do right now we got everything in we got our tappets in our tappet covers um, yeah so 34 24 we're gonna do that now then we're gonna put this guy on here and torque that to spec quick tip right here a little update for you guys and a quick tip i don't have the tool that goes inside of here what i do is i just use you can use a wedge a little piece of wood i use a 5 16 i either put it on this side for the smaller one it works but for the bigger side at 34 i roll it in here and i can show you that real quick so i just go like this It'll roll and want to pop out or whatever, but you just keep it in there and go to the next tooth and it stays in there. So that's a quick tip for you guys. See you on the next one. Let's tighten up the chain tensioner to 120 inch pounds. The two bolts, blue Loctite. And then the kick, um, putting this guy on. Uh, that's also probably going to be 120 inch pounds if I was a bad man. We got the cover on. Um, we're moving on to our push rods. Tappets are in. Screaming Eagle tappets. Everything's torqued down to spec. Um, new O rings up and down. In there. Brand. Oh, don't have those brand new ones in yet. But, uh, so, as soon as I get. The intake and exhaust moving at the same exact time, it's just gonna be like a little hairline fracture. You're gonna see both of them click. I'm gonna get right in the middle of that. Then this one's gonna be able to be adjusted. I'm gonna put these push rods in. I'm gonna do the same thing. When this one, intake and exhaust, open and close at the same time, up and down, right when it gets to a little tick, I'll go right in the middle of it. These ones will be able to be adjusted. Um, three and a half turns or 24 flats. Put the lock on. Call it a day. Um, I mean, 
may put some blue Loctite on there and uh, that will be it and then we'll be moving on to the next thing. Um, I'll probably put some paper behind here and hit the little spray paint on those chips and after I install the clips that go on here. Uh, stay tuned for the next update. You know, I'm sorry for the last video on my cam plate. Hopefully this one will be an updated video and uh, you guys will uh, appreciate it. With that said, please like and subscribe, show your friends, and I'm out. Also, I wanted to tell you guys, when you guys remove um, your tappet, you know, mark it one, two, three, four, including your tappet. Put the mark on the front side of the tappet, so when you take it out, you know to put it right back into the same spot. I did not do that this time. Um, I just wanted to get the thing taken apart. I thought I was going to have to replace a whole lot more. I wish I did. You want to have the same wear um, on the little cut part that touches your uh, rockers and uh, the tap it. So it's very good to put them in the, the exact same spot so it has the same wear. But other than that, shit's still going to work. Uh, but that's just a very good protocol that you guys should be doing. Um, uh, other than that, stay tuned for the next one. Alright, peace. If you look down here, you will be able to see the tappet. Both the little, um, the lock for the tappet so that the tappet doesn't move, the bar. They'll both be flush. And that's where you're able to adjust it. I put a couple white marks on here. I'm gonna go three and a half turns and mop it. Uh, to know for sure, like I was saying before, your intake and exhaust will move at the same time. So, that one's starting to go up. And if I go back up with the tire a little bit, see that one's starting to move? The back one. So, I'm gonna go right in the middle. right there and hopefully you guys were able to see that all right so we're going, we're going to put in the spark plugs now uh spark plugs i got the screaming eagle sparking spark plugs in there uh they do run a lot hotter so if you're sitting at a stop sign i mean most uh technicians will tell you just to run the ngks uh but I'm gonna run the Screaming Eagles, I'm a racer, and if I sit at a stoplight, I'll turn my bike off. Um, and we'll see how they run. If I don't like them, I'll pull them off. So I'm sticking them in there. We're gonna run it 16 foot pounds. I think it's anywhere from like 14 to um, 18 foot pounds. So I'm gonna run 16, 16, because that's what I know. <laughs> 